Hello, welcome to the next episode of Student Dave. Yes, we're back, like I said, and we're a wondrous Technicolor now. See, because we can do like this. We're a wondrous Technicolor now. And we're dancing, we're happy today. And why is that? Well, it's because we're working on a pretty cool project today. We're looking at the Markov model, or the Markov process, or the Markov chain. Um, and while, you know, we did the common filter before, and the common filter is pretty awesome and stuff, I think the Markov model, the Markov process, is a little more general and just incredibly useful, used in a lot of different fields. It's actually used in Google's page rank and a lot of different things. And so that's what we're going to go over today. Um, and so what is a Markov model interested in? Well, in the most general sense, Markov model is looking at how is the world evolving over time. Like, what it does is it treats the world or a, sis or a collection of states, a system of states, and sees how does something transition through state to state to state to state, given some statistics about the way these uh, state transitions are set up. Let's take a look at an example. Say we're looking at Earth, right? And we got the Earth in three different states. Uh, not three different shapes, three different states. Let me, let me add a little bit of character to some of the stuff. Say we got like a water world, Kevin, Cost Kevin Costner's horribly failed movie. Um, then say we got a, a desert world, or like a Mad Max world, when Mel Gibson wasn't crazy. And then, um, and then we got like Armageddon world, you know, Bruce Willis is like saving stuff. And there's like primordial gases. <laughs> okay, so say we have the world and it's in three different uh, states. And we, we know something about this. We know, like, statistically, there's, like, say, a 0.3 chance of going from Costner's water world to uh, Mel Gibson's desert world. And then, like, maybe it's, like, a 0.7% chance of going there. And then, there, you know, there's basically different probabilities of transitioning through different states. And what Markov models are about, what Markov models are all about is basically analyze, looking at these stats, looking at these uncertainties, these probabilities of transitions, and looking at how the system evolves over time, how much time is spent in different states, and how does it move through um, move the through the through the states over time? Like, is it asymptotic? Does it oscillate? Different things. And so, as you can see, you know, state transition it can be about anything. It could be about planets. It could be like mood. It could be modeling the mind. It could be modeling. Um, a signal through time, all kinds of different things. And we'll be looking at um, basically the details of the Markov model. How does it work? How does one calculate it? Then go through a Bayesian Ninja MATLAB example. And then this, um, and then I'll extend um, into um, Monte Carlo Markov, I mean, uh, Markov chain Monte Carlo, and, um, and then continue on with a hidden Markov chain and different things. Okay. Okay, so uh, what exactly is a Markov model? What is a Markov process? Well, it's a system that assumes the Markov property, which is specifically saying that the future, the next iteration, can be predicted solely from what's currently happening. That is, we don't need to know the past, we just need to know what's happening right now to predict the future. That's the assumption. So in general, if we want to talk about the probability of a system, what we would say is that, well, the probability of some value x n plus 1 is going to equal x, well the probability of that is, well you need to know what happened in the past, right, in general. You need to know, well at x1 it equaled x1, and then at uh, x2 it equaled x2 dot 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 to xn, which is right now, it equaled xn. And that's kind of the general idea of how we think of things, but a lot of systems can be described in the what the Markov property that is the assumption is that xn plus 1 actually can be predicted solely from xn right now if this assumption is true if you can make this assumption there is quite a bit you can do in terms of analysis uh, in a very simple way you could create what's called a Markov transition matrices which we'll talk about in a moment but just to give an example imagine you're playing like the game um, I don't know if you guys ever played those kind of boards games like shoots and ladders, but basically any board game, let's just make a line, any board game, where you know you're moving from space to space to space and you're using dice, right? Well, say you start off here and you roll the dice and you go up, the dice roll is two, and now you're here. Well, I roll the dice again and say I roll a four, 
you know, I know where I can go. I know the probabilities of where I can go. I, mean, I can go like one, two, three, whatever. Say I'm rolling two dice, there's certain probabilities that are more likely than other ones. And I think is the important thing is I don't need to know where I was. I don't need to know where I was in the past. You don't need to know way back. All you need to know is where am I right now? What are the probabilities of different uh, dice rolls? And that's enough. I can figure out where I statistically should end up next. And that, therefore, has the Markov property and is therefore modelable. Now, something that isn't in the strictest sense is like a game like Blackjack or maybe you have a bag of marbles and uh, like you got a bag of marbles and like they're different colors, right? And you take one out without replacement or you take from a card, you take a deck, you know, take like an ace from a deck of cards, there's one less ace. You need to know that prior past or at least incorporate that into your model um, in, order to, in order to predict what's going to happen next. And so strictly speaking, that's not a Markov process. While you could actually model it a little bit, but strictly speaking, that's not a Markov so process because it's not memoryless. You need to know what has been done in the past. So now we're going to talk about the transition parts, uh, how to create a transition matrices and, uh, from the states and then see all the fun things we could do with that, which is basically kind of the summary of how the whole system is going to behave. Okay, let's go ahead and look at a simple example of the Markov chain. Um, then we'll go through the details and flesh out what is a Markov chain, what is it about, you know, uh, attributes of it. Then go on to the Bayesian Ninja example and then implement that in MATLAB. Okay, the Bayesian Ninja example will be more complicated and we'll see the implementation. Um, so let's go way back. Let's go back to one of my, my very first video where we were talking about our hipster friend where he's out there learning about Bayesian, we're doing Bayesian statistics. Actually, you know, I can't draw it here very well. Uh, oh, I have an idea. <laughs> there we go. Much better. Okay, so here's our hipster friend, right? We're back with him. And uh, remember, we were trying to find him because we were blinded and we because we were drinking too much or whatever. And he's kind of drinking to himself, isn't he? Well, anyways, um, let's say we're going to model our hipster. And let's say he is in two states. He is A, where he is being ironic. And then there's B, where he's not being ironic. And we want to see how he goes from being ironic to not ironic in this state space of hipster attitude or hipster behavior. <laughs> okay? So um, this is basically how a Markov system is modeled. It's modeled with states. You've got a set of states. Here we have a set of states A and B. These are our two states that define our entire system. It's our collection of state space. Now we need to talk about is how does the how do they connect to each other? Well, let's look let's make it a fully connected graph. Now remember this is kind of looking at graph theory in a sense. We have our node A, node B, and then there's a connection from A to B, and then there's going to be a connection from B to A, but then there's going to be also a connection from A to A, and there's going to be a connection from B to B. Those are four possible connections. And you're just going to have some probability associated with them. Let's give this the probability um, x, and then this one the probability y. Now we can go and say, well, remember, it's a probability. So it has to sum to 1. All of what a can do must sum to 1, and all of what b can do must sum to 1. Each one must sum to 1. So therefore, by necessity, this must be 1 minus x, because it only has 2 edges coming out to pathways and of course likewise this is going to be 1 minus y. Now this is the system and this is all the states and this is what it looks like pictorially graphically but the beauty of Markov process is that this whole thing can be rendered down into a matrices. Let's draw a b current. This is a b current and then draw a box and this will be a b future, the next iteration. And what is that box going to look like? Well, A goes to A with the probability. A goes to A, this loop here, and A goes to B. That'll fill. A goes to A is right here. A, a current to A future, that's this transition. Then from A current to B is going to be this one. And vice versa, from B to B will be this one. And from B to A will be this one. So we just plug in our values. So it'll be A to A will be 1 minus X. A to B will be X. From B to A will be Y. 
and from B to B will be 1 minus Y. And this, right here, this awesome matrices, describes, this is called the transition matrices, and it describes completely the system. This is why it's important that it's memoryless. We're only looking at the prior. This isn't looking at the past and the past and the past and past. We're looking at just where are we at right now and then where are we going to be next. This is where we're going to be next. And so this is the memoryless state transition matrices that tells us everything we need to know about how the system is going to behave over time. And so that's what we're going to work with. We're going to look at this and how this performs. But this is the gold because think about it. This is just a matrix. Linear algebra, and this is just graph theory. So linear algebra and graph theory with their long history have tons of tools that we can use to analyze and look at how these things are going to change over time.